Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the linkage of Pope John the 23rd Church and Christ the King Parishes at Pope John's. Today we are celebrating the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider and homilist is Father Zach Miller. I, Rick Beisinger, am your commentator, and Russell Morrison is our lector. Just some gentle reminders about how to receive Eucharist during the COVID. We ask that you are in line six feet from the friend in front of you. Sanitize your hands from the dispenser while in line. After receiving the Eucharist, step aside, lift your mask, and consume the host. We appreciate your cooperation. Faith formation registration is going on now. Please see the website of either Christ the King or Pope John's to easily register. The high school youth group will have their Friendsgiving celebration at 7 p.m. Friday <clears throat> in the Parish Center. If you will be relocating for the winter months, please let the office know. Christmas giving tree will consist of gift card purchases this year. Monetary donations to buy gift cards are also possible. Collection boxes are located in the vestibule and outside the parish office. Thanksgiving basket food or monetary donations are still being accepted. Please join us as we prayerfully join, prayerfully begin this joyful celebration. Please stand. We also welcome those who are viewing us at home and for those who are joining us both spiritually. As we gather ourselves this evening, we start with that great sign and symbol of our faith, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters. As we come this evening before this altar of the Lord, we prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Take away the sins of the world. 
receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of the world. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God. Let us pray. <coughs> Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil, has an unfalling prize. Her husband, entrusting her to her his heart, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the responsorial psalm is, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork, Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around the table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Thus, behold, is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we listen to the scriptures this weekend, the first couple of readings, there should have been something stirring within us. Or the readings should have stirred a thought-provoking image in us. It's in the first reading that we see from the very beginning talking about a good wife. But there's a foreshadowing in Proverbs this weekend that it's alluding to and showing us a relationship that all of us have to the church. It's a spousal relationship when we see ourselves as a member of a community, as the member of the church. And it is the church that is the good wife. It is the church that is that good spouse that is, as the Proverbs is saying, beyond any pearls. And then it's in the second reading that we hear this relationship of ourselves being children within this church. And also the idea and the theme of what we have in our faith at some moment may be plucked from us. 
or taken away or changed. And then when we look at this, we hear about the gospel today. And it's the interesting fact because it's one line that is overlooked when we hear about the good stewards. The master gave each person what was to their ability. To each person within the gospel reading, they were given a challenge, they were given a coin, or as they say, a talent. To each according to his ability. When we look and place the three readings together, we see this intermingling of a relationship of ourselves to our church, to a community. And it's one that we find it's being balanced and encouraged, but also something to strive at. It is this weekend that as the Diocese of Syracuse, we're starting a year of vocations, a year-long celebration of the bigger aspect of vocations. Because a vocation is, as we know, kind of the principles in the church, a vocation to married life, a vocation to single life, a religious vocation, a diaconate vocation, a priesthood vocation. But as we look at this relationship, it's a deeper relationship that we're looking at because in the church, a vocation also means a call. A call from God. An awakening, a reality, a vision to see ourselves in a very particular way. And if we just take a moment and think about it, is that each one of us is called from the very beginning of our relationship in the church, from our baptisms, we're all called to be a part of this greater relationship. And if you think about our calling for a minute, it's a calling from our hearts, a calling into our community, and a calling to our souls. And it's a balanced relationship that we learn how to seek out, but also how to live it out with great joy. Because God has called us according to our ability. And that can be a challenge. Because for each one of us, our original vocation that we may have been called at at our baptisms may change throughout our lives, and the calling that we have today may be different from the calling that we have tomorrow or the next day. And if take the example of the priesthood, the priesthood of today is different from the priesthood that I knew five years ago. It's different than the priesthood that we knew 50 years ago but it's still one in the same relationship. That is so true for each one of us, is that this call from God, this vocation that's set in each one of our hearts, whether it's family life or single life or any ministerial life, it can look different in every aspect of our lives. And that's something we should rejoice in. Because ultimately, it's in the gospel message. What is that God has given us to our ability, the time, the talent? Is did we try? Did we try to do something? That is all that God is asking us to do. And I think it's, in this year of vocations, that's exactly as our communities of Pope John the 23rd and Christ the King. 
is the question that's being asked upon us. No deep theological reason or explanation, but simply, did we try? Did we try to see our life in a little bit different way? So as I conclude today, I want to put a challenge out to the parishes. And I put it at the end of the Mass at Christ the King, and it fits very well in the homily here. Every Monday evening at 7 p.m., we have a group that meets here at Pope John's, but also right now they're meeting digitally. It's a family rosary group. It's parents that come together to pray for our children. I want to challenge the parishes as we look at this year of vocations. In this first step, we already have the foundation, the, the bridge, the workings in front of us. We just have to utilize it. Is either to see Mike King, Michael Wave, because he's the ministerial leader for this. If you would like to join them via Zoom on Monday evenings, he can get you all the contact information and it's often listed in the bulletin. Or if you don't have the technology or the ability to meet with them on Zoom, Monday evenings at 7, in your own homes, just to pray a rosary for our own vocations, for our own call. Because what is ultimately God is calling us to do is to try. My brothers and sisters, we stand and it is together that we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, a light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. It is from the depths of our hearts that in this moment of prayer that we lift up these prayers to our loving God. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all wives and spouses. You alone know their tireless energy, worries, hopes, and dreams. Let them feel your presence in their lives and know that they are in your hands and your feet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That we may be seen as children of the light, not those of darkness. We pray that our souls will always be ready for the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray at this time of harvest and fruitfulness that we use the gifts of the Lord has given us. To each of us, the first we recognize our gifts and our abilities, and second, that you, Lord, direct us to use those gifts for the betterment of your world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for calm and health throughout the world. The world and local leaders continue to be responsible for the common good and calm us with assurance that this COVID pandemic, too, shall pass. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of Pope John XXIII and Christ the King parishes, that our prayers may lead into greater communion with each other and with our Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have recently passed and for the repose of the soul of Genevieve Pianisek, whose funeral was today, and for those listed in our parish book of life, and for the mass intentions of Pope John XXIII and Christ the King parishioners, Marita Pritzula, Arthur Kaltenborn, Richard Lauber Sr., deceased members of the Legion of Mary Morning Star Prayer Group, Peter Ponza, Joan T. O'Neill, Catherine and Paul Salem, and John L. Oliveri. May they find everlasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick of the parish, for the ill that are listed in our parish bulletin, for the special intentions in our parish book of prayers, and for our own special intentions, we pray now in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. It is through our loving God that we ask all these prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of this holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that what you might love in us, you might what you loved in your Son, whose by obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Oh, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us eternal offering to you so that we maintain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, we are blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, We, your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the, the glory, glory are yours, yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your, with spirit. your spirit. Let us offer each other a gesture of God's peace. Please. Peace be Thank you. 
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank everyone for being with us today. For those who are joining us at home, thank you. And enjoy the week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Hey.